Every year, the best NFL team is decided by the Super Bowl, but today, it'll be decided by NFL imperialism. The rules are simple. We'll spin the wheel to see which team goes on the attack first, and then we'll spin the arrow to see in which direction they will be attacking. The winning team not only claims the territory of their defeated rivals, but they also get to steal one of their top players. But here's the twist. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has decided to reset the entire NFL using a fantasy draft. Imagine powerhouses like the Kansas City Chiefs stripped of their dominant duo Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Meanwhile, other teams struck gold, adding other superstars to their roster. Spinning the wheel for the first time, it looks like we have the Cleveland Brown. Now, to spin the arrow, it's going to be... Northeast. And looking at the map, they are taking on the new look Pittsburgh Steelers. Micah Parsons, Tyler Lockett, and Vita Vea leading the Browns against Lane Johnson, Jair Alexander, and DK Metcalf of the Steelers. Each game will be played on two minute quarters, and the last team standing will be crowned the champions of the new look NFL. And on the very first play of the game, Jordan Love is sacked and Micah Parsons recovers the fumble. Despite settling for a field goal on their opening drive, CJ Stroud and the Browns are working their way down the field. In the red zone, CJ Stroud snaps the ball, steps back, throws to the end zone, and Tyler Lockett comes down with it for the first touchdown of the game. Jordan Love and the Steelers fail to mount the comeback, and the Cleveland Browns are the winners earning the right to claim one player from the Steelers roster. They opt to take 98 overall Lane Johnson and beef up their offensive line. After adding Lane Johnson, the Browns take over the Steelers territory on the map. As we spin the wheel to see our next matchup, it looks like the Denver Broncos are heading into the spotlight. Spinning this arrow, let's see which way they are attacking and it's going to be Southwest. Having a look at the map, that seems to be the Arizona Cardinals. This looks like an even matchup as both teams are 80 overall with Derrick Henry leading the Broncos and Bob Middle leading the Cardinals. The game ended up going back and forth, but in overtime, Russell Wilson threw a costly interception. Geno Smith makes them pay by connecting with speedy C.D. Lamb for a game-winning touchdown, securing the victory for the Cardinals. And not only do they get to take over the Broncos territory on the map, but they also get to claim Derrick Henry as their new running back. If your favorite NFL team gets eliminated early in this competition, don't worry. Definitely go and root for some of your favorite players as they will be in new uniforms throughout this video. Hitting the wheel for the third time, the wheel is going to be landing on the Los Angeles Chargers. Given the arrow a spin, it's going to be North east a little bit, which means they are attacking the Las Vegas Raiders. This game should be an offensive showdown as both teams have star-studded lineups including George Kittle and Jamar Chase. The Raiders waste no time making an impact with Jared Goff connecting seamlessly with Jake Ferguson for an early touchdown. Despite Watson's efforts to lead the comeback, the Raiders defense stands tall, securing the 10-3 victory. George Kittle is the highest rated superstar on the Chargers roster, but he will now be donning the silver and black for the Las Vegas Raiders. And with that win, the Raiders take over territory in California. Without skipping a beat, the next team that is going on the attack is going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. And after spinning this arrow, it looks like they're heading east. That means they're going to be attacking the Chicago Bears. And as you can see, the Bears definitely have an advantage with an 81 overall team and Brock Purdy at quarterback. After three quarters, the score was all tied up at three. On the Bears' next drive, Brock Purdy delivers a beautiful pass to Elijah Moore, who ends up breaking a tackle and sprints all the way down the field for an incredible touchdown to win the game. And with that win, the Bears elected to bring in Marshawn Lattimore from the Chiefs, and more importantly, they get to take over all their territory. Diving right into the next matchup, the wheel spin lands on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Giving the arrow a spin, and it's going to be pointing southwest, meaning that they will be attacking the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins are rated an 82 overall, with Tyreek Hill as one of their top three players, while the Buccaneers have Travis Kelsey and Jalen Ramsey leading the way. Led by Anthony Richardson, the Buccaneers waste no time getting down the field with this handoff to Alvin Kamara for 15 yards. And at the three yard line, Anthony Richardson hikes the ball, he decides to keep it for himself and easily gets into the end zone to score the first touchdown of the game. Tyreek Hill was then able to show off his speed by getting wide open to even the score. With just 30 seconds to go in the game, Richardson tricks the Dolphins defense with a play action pass to Jerry Judy, putting them into field goal range. And Greg Joseph nails a 43 yard field goal to win the game. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers decide to bring in Tyreek Hill to help bolster their wide receiver group and they also take another portion of Florida in the process. After landing on the Cowboys, they were able to easily claim an unclaimed territory to their northeast, followed up by the Tennessee Titans who were also able to expand to an empty territory southwest of them before finally landing on the Indianapolis Colts. They could potentially attack the Bears, Lions, Bengals, Browns, or expand it to some unclaimed territory. And after spinning this arrow, it looks like they're heading northwest, 
taking on the Chicago Bears. And even though the Bears have already won an earlier matchup over the Chiefs, they are facing a well-rounded Colts team led by Justin Herbert. At the start of the second quarter, Brock Purdy hands off to Aaron Jones, who breaks multiple tackles, jukes out a defender, and he's going all the way. Look at him go. He's taking it to the house for the first touchdown of the game. That lead did not last long as Herbert finds Evan Ingram in the end zone and this game is all tied up. In the second half, the Colts secure the lead with a long pass and field goal, pinching the win and eliminating the Chicago Bears. The Colts were awarded all of the Bears' previous territory with that win, but they also decide to bring in Dexter Lawrence from the Bears roster. The wheel keeps spinning and the next team up is going to be the Houston Texans. As we spin this arrow, they are heading northeast to make their attack. And that means they are taking on the New Orleans Saints. Both teams have a respectable top three, so this should be a good game. However, the game ended up being completely one-sided with Tua leading the Saints to an early lead in this first half. Texans' hopes of a comeback was squashed when the Saints' defense came up with a crucial stop on fourth down, healing their fate and eliminating them from the competition. As a result of that victory, the Saints end up bringing in Joe Mixon as their new running back, and they take all of Houston's territory as well. The next matchup showcased the San Francisco 49ers who had to head northeast and attack the Raiders. 49ers roster had an advantage against the Raiders, and it showed with Micah Hyde picking off Jared Goff and returning it for a touchdown. The Niners went on to defeat the Raiders by a score of 20-3, and they decided to bring over Jamar Chase from the Raiders roster, securing majority of California with that win. As we move on to more wheel spins, the New York Jets are up next, having to attack the unclaimed territory to the southwest. And following suit, the Cincinnati Bengals take their chance attacking the unclaimed territory to the southeast. However, the next wheel spin lands on the Washington Commanders. And giving this arrow a spin, it looks like the Commanders are heading northeast. And looking at the map, that's going to be the Baltimore Ravens. Both of these teams have low-rated quarterbacks in Kenny Pickett and Daniel Jones, so this should be interesting. The first half remained relatively quiet until the last 10 seconds when Pickett connects with his tight end, Kyle Pitts, for a crucial touchdown. Despite the Ravens' attempt at a comeback in the second half, the Commanders stand firm, securing a 16-7 victory. They not only get to claim the rest of the Ravens' territory, but they also get to steal defensive superstar Fred Warner in the process. During the next four wheel spins, the Seahawks, Titans, Packers, and the Giants all claim the unclaimed territory surrounding them. However, the Cincinnati Bengals find themselves on the attack next. After giving the arrow a spin, it looks like it's going to be Northwest, which means they will be attacking the Cleveland Browns. Despite the Bengals having an overall advantage, we cannot count out the Browns, who already have a win in this competition. In a tightly contested game, CJ Stroud shows his composure by finding Luke Musgrave in the end zone to take the early lead 7 to nothing. With very little time left on the clock, Dak Prescott decides to take a check down. What are you doing? And they end up losing the game. And while the Bengals have a few elite players on their roster, none are better than 97 overall Jesse Bates, who will now join the Browns defense. With their second win in this competition, they now take over all of the Bengals territory as well. The next team up is going to be the Buffalo Bills and the arrow points southeast. Their target? That would be the Philadelphia Eagles. Both these teams are loaded on offense with Jalen Hurts returning to Philly to take on his former team. And weirdly enough, the first score came late in the second half with Stafford connecting with Kendrick Bourne for the touchdown. The Eagles end up keeping the lead the rest of the game and the Bills are now eliminated. Marcus Lawrence is now a member of the Philadelphia Eagles, which I absolutely hate being a Cowboys fan and they take the rest of the Bills' territory as well. Carolina was the next team, but the arrow point is south, and the Panthers extend to an unclaimed territory. Continuing on, the next wheel spin lands on the New York Giants, and after spinning this arrow, it looks like they're heading southeast, which means they take on the New England Patriots. And as you can see, both top threes look pretty even, so this should be a good matchup. However, it's the Giants' offense led by Kyler Murray that strikes first, with Dawson Knox finding the end zone for an early lead. With just three seconds remaining, Burrow steps back, and oh, he takes a sack. What are you doing? The Giants end up winning seven to nothing. How? With that win, they decide to upgrade their QB position by bringing in Joe Burrow to start over Kyler Murray. And the Giants not only take control of the Patriots territory on the map, but they also claim all the unclaimed spots in Maine. With just 20 teams remaining, the next team going on attack is going to be the Detroit Lions. They will be heading south take on the Indianapolis Colts. Although the Colts strike first, it was Tannehill and the Lions who scored the next two touchdowns, which was good enough to defeat the Colts, 
killing Dexter Lawrence and taking control of the rest of the Colts' territory. The next couple of wheel spins allowed the Cardinals to head southwest and expand into an unclaimed territory, all by the Minnesota Vikings heading east to take on Mahomes and the 85 overall Packers. And to no one's surprise, Mahomes easily led the Packers to their first victory of the competition, earning them an additional spot on the map and bringing in all-pro running back Christian McCaffrey to boost their already stacked offense. And right into the next wheel spin with the New Orleans Saints going on an attack, but they are heading southeast to expand into an unclaimed territory. But we finally get another matchup with the wheel landing on the Falcons, who will definitely be attacking someone since they have plenty of teams around them. Let's see where they're heading, and it looks like they're going south to Jacksonville making their attack. The Jags have an 83 overall team with Justin Jefferson leading the charge. But both teams struggled offensively and this game heads to overtime. And in overtime, Gardner Minshew takes a huge sack, giving the ball back to Aaron Rodgers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was then able to connect with TJ Hawkinson who was stopped at the one yard line and then Elijah Mitchell then punches it in, giving the Jags their first win of the competition, taking over all of Atlanta's territory. And additionally, they're bringing over Marlon Humphrey to boost up their cornerback room. Moving on to the next wheel spin, it looks like the 49ers are going on the attack. And this time, the arrow is pointing to the North East. And this one is clear. They're going up against the Seahawks, who have Josh Allen as their quarterback. He showed why he's rated so high in Madden by driving down the field and connecting with Jaden Reed for a 12-yard touchdown. Her Cousins does respond with a great drive of his own, finding Christian Watson for a 5-yard touchdown just before the half. The second half remains scoreless, and we are now heading to overtime. And in overtime, Kirk Cousins was able to take the lead, but Josh Allen quickly answers back with a touchdown pass to Terry McLaurin. The Niners had to put the... Wait! They faked it! And they got it. There's no way they did that. It was fourth and one, and they faked a punt in overtime. It all comes down to this field goal by Aubrey. Let's see if he makes it. They hike it. The kick is up, and it's good. Sails through the uprights, and the 49ers eliminate and stun the Seahawks. 49ers take the rest of their territory, including bringing in 99 overall Zach Martin to beef up their offensive line. And in the next wheel, it looks like the team going on attack is going to be the Carolina Panthers. Getting the arrow, and it looks like they have to attack south. According to the map, they take on Jacksonville. This game was back and forth, but in overtime, Justin Fields leads the Panthers down the field, and they end it with the field goal. The Panthers end up taking over the rest of Jacksonville's territory, but they also get to bring in Justin Jefferson to their roster. During the next four wheel spins, the map sees a few changes with the Cowboys, Cardinals, Commanders, and 49ers each expanding to unclaimed territory. This led to the Browns going on the attack next. The arrow is pointing northeast. It means they have a date with the Eagles. The Browns end up taking the lead late thanks to Devin A. Chan, and the Eagles fail to tie the game up. The Browns now take over all Philadelphia's territory, and they are bringing in Mark Andrews at their new tight end number one. Continue to see which team goes on the attack next, and it's going to be the Tennessee Titans. And they will be attacking Northwest. This leads to a big matchup against the Detroit Lions. Despite the Titans having the advantage with an 84 overall rating and Lamar Jackson as their quarterback, the game turned out to be a defensive battle. Late in the fourth quarter, Ryan Tannehill leads the Lions down the field, setting up a potential game-winning field goal attempt. The kick is up, and it sails through the uprights, and the Detroit Lions upset the higher-rated Titans. And in the process, they elect to upgrade their quarterback and bring in future MVP winner, Lamar Jackson. And they also get to take all of Tennessee's territory, which is quite significant. With that first really big upset of the competition, we have the Arizona Cardinals attacking next. Lucky for them, the arrow points east and they are able to expand into an unclaimed territory. However, the Jets are the next team on the wheel and they get a chance for their first attack. Spinning the arrow and it looks like they're going to be heading northeast, which means they take on the Giants. Unfortunately for the Jets, their Hail Mary attempt was not successful and the Giants went on to win and they take over the rest of the Northeast and adding 99 overall Aaron Donald to their defense. The map is really starting to shape out and on the next few wheel spins we saw the Cowboys heading southwest to take on Arizona who honestly put up a great fight but it wasn't enough as the Cowboys win by a score of 10 to 7 bringing back CeeDee Lamb to the roster and taking over their territory followed by the Green Bay Packers who go back on the attack this time to the south where Lamar and the Lions came out swinging with a catch from Amon Ra before Najee Harris punches in for six. The Packers are down 11 and Patrick Mahomes steps back, throws the ball and it gets interception letting the Lions Close up the rest of the game and upsetting the Green Bay Packers, who were the highest rated team in this competition. And just like that, the Lions take over a big chunk of territory on the map. And since the Lions already have Lamar Jackson as their QB1, they elected to bring in Christian McCaffrey, who joins his third team now. With just 10 teams remaining in this competition, the next Wilson lands on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who have to head north. 
and face the Carolina Panthers. This seems to be an even matchup with both team overalls being similar, but the Bucks make their mark in the red zone with Anthony Richardson keeping the ball for himself and scoring the first touchdown. The Panthers are trying to mount the comeback, and on fourth down, they hand it off to Saquon, who gets stopped and they are not going to win this game. The Ducks end up securing the victory and elected to bring in Justin Jefferson, who will join an elite wide receiver group with Tyreek Hill and Brandon Ayu. And with that big win, the Bucks now have all of Florida and they also have all of Carolina as well. With the next wheel landing on the Detroit Lions, we have to see which direction they will be attacking. And that's going to be Northeast. And they get to take on CJ Stroud and the Cleveland Browns. Faced with a third and eight, CJ Stroud steps back Okay, what's he doing? Oh, he launches it. It's going all the... <laughs> but barely gets swatted out. That would have been a huge touchdown. Lamar was quickly able to get his team down the field before finding his tight end who manages to get into the end zone. The game looking grim for the Browns. Lamar throws an interception to Jesse Bates, giving the Browns one last chance. Here we go. Third down and five. Let's see what CJ Stroud can do. Steps back. He takes a sack. It's fumbled. And the Lions recover! And with that fumble recovery, the Lions end up defeating the Browns and they are able to take all of their territory, which is quite a bit, but they also take Micah Parsons to really upgrade their defense. With just eight teams left in this competition, it looks like the Dallas Cowboys are going on attack once again. And this time, they are heading Northwest to take on the 49ers. And unfortunately, the Cowboys' time in this competition comes to an end as the Niners score a game-winning touchdown by Rashad White in overtime, claiming all of the Cowboys' territory on the map and stealing away CeeDee Lamb, who joins his third team in this competition. The wheel finally landed on the LA Rams, who ended up heading east to attack the highly powered Niners. Although the Rams were clearly the underdog, they were able to kick their second field goal in this game, taking a 6-0 lead. Ace with a 4th and 3, the Niners need a touchdown to win this game, Okay, Kirk Cousins looking and he throws it underneath and he fails to get the first down. Somehow the LA Rams end up beating the Niners six to nothing. And just like that, the Rams knock out the juggernaut of the 49ers and they steal Nick Bosa away from them to beef up their defense. And just like that, the Rams somehow occupied the majority of the United States winning just one game. Okay, let's spin this wheel again to see which team goes on the attack and it's gonna be the Detroit Lions once again. A couple potential teams they can attack, but the arrow is telling them to go southwest which means they take on the LA Rams. Not much of a break for the Rams, but let's see if they can take down Lamar and the Lions. Fast forward to late in the fourth quarter, the Lions have a 17 point lead and end up stopping the Rams once again in the red zone to easily take care of business. Well, Nick Bosa didn't last very long on the Rams and he is heading to Detroit to boost an already stacked Lions team. And they also get to take over all of LA's territory, including the three states in between since no other team can claim them. The Lions definitely look like the heavy favorite in this competition, but the next wheel spin lands on the Washington Command. Hitting the arrow, it looks like they're heading south. Take on the Bucks. They have a pretty even matchup here, but the Bucks' offense is loaded with elite talent. In overtime, both teams fail to score any points on their first possession, but Zeke is doing all he can to get the commanders into field goal range. A couple plays later, it was up to Justin Tucker. The kick is up, and it's good. The commanders knock out the Bucks by a score of three to nothing. And with that, they decide to bring in Tyree Kill and take the rest of the Bucks territory. And after spinning the wheel once again, it looks like the commanders are going back on the attack. And this time, they have to attack east. That means we have a commanders versus Giants matchup. I would definitely have to think that the Giants have the advantage with Joe Burrow at quarterback. Well, you never know. We've seen plenty of upsets so far. Skipping ahead to the fourth quarter, Burrow has a chance to win this game, but he fails to convert on third down. The commanders are not able to score any points in overtime, and Joe Burrow did what he does best in clutch moments. Gets his team down the field before throwing a touchdown pass to Jalen Waddle to win the game. They elected to bring over Miles Garrett from the commander's roster and the Giants take over the entire east portion of the map with that win. We are down to just three teams left in the new look NFL and it looks like this time it's going to be the Detroit Lions and they could potentially attack either of the two teams remaining. Let's see who they're going to be attacking and the arrow says east which means they are heading to New York to play the Giants. The game started off great for the Giants as they were able to get down the field and on third and eight, Joe Burrow steps back and finds Dawson Knox in the end zone for the first score of the game. Since the Giants missed an extra point earlier in the game, Lamar has a chance to win this thing. Unfortunately, he overthrows his receiver and is now faced with a third and nine. Lamar snaps the ball and decides to throw a screen pass to Christian McCaffrey who fails to get the first down. This is a pivotal moment in the game. He decides to hand it off and Najee Harris 
gets the first down somehow. With less than a minute to go, Lamar connects with Amon Ra over the middle before taking a huge sack. With just 10 seconds left, fourth down, last chance, Lamar Jackson throws it to the end zone and Michael Thomas comes down with it. He just tied the game. They're one extra point away from winning this thing. Okay, extra point is up and it's good. The Detroit Lions take down the New York Giants. What an incredible comeback and the Lions take over all of the Giants territory. But since the Lions already have Bosa and Parsons, they elected to bring in Sauce Gardner to beef up their secondary. We are down to the last game between the Detroit Lions and the New Orleans Saints. Obviously, we know the Lions roster is incredibly strong, winning plenty of games throughout this competition. But on the other side, the Saints have some solid pieces in Tua and Aiden Hutchinson. Opening drive by the Saints was quickly stopped by the Lions defense, and now Lamar gets his first opportunity. He hands it off to Christian McCaffrey, who takes it 30 yards for the first down. Then he connects with his receiver before getting stopped short of the end zone. But on fourth and goal, he finds Isaiah Hodgins in the end zone to take the lead. In the fourth quarter, Tua hands it off to Joe Mixon who picks up a few and on third down, he hits Juju Smith who hangs on to it for the first. First and goal, Tua needs a touchdown to tie this game up. Okay, here we go. He steps back, looking, scanning, he throws it to the end zone. Mac Hollins comes down with it. Okay, they're elected to two point conversion. Looks like they threw it. They got it. Eight to seven, the Lions might be eliminated. But Detroit has all three timeouts left. Lamar and Detroit need a miracle. First and 10, okay, picks up the first down to his tight end. Lamar hikes it, here we go. And he throws it underneath. Oh my gosh, they take a timeout. Not a whole lot of time left, 15 seconds left. Here we go, Lamar Jackson hikes it and he throws it. Oh, it gets dropped, third and seven. Here we go. This is like one of their last chances. They need to get into field goal range. Lamar steps back, throws it, and... Lamar... Lamar and Rom, St. Brown makes the grab and they're in field goal range. No way. He did not just do that. And here is the field goal attempt. Let's see if the Lions can make a, a miraculous comeback. Here that is. The kick is up and... It's good, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. The Detroit Lions are your champions of the new look NFL, taking down the Saints in the Super Bowl. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out where I built the NFL's first 20-0 team. It was a banger, click on it, right over here.